Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I wish you a very happy Ostara. Yes, that would be the traditional name for the spring equinox. This time our spring equinox starts on March 20th and here where I live, it starts at 3.37 in the morning. Please check your calendars. I wanted to share with you in real time what would be the best to celebrate Ostara. Ostara is a Celtic tradition and it is a representation of rebirth and the coming together of the goddess and the god. They have now met each other. They have become a couple. And what does that mean for us? This would be a good time for us to rebirth and birth something new that we want. We've been doing a lot of quiet time, but with us going into this next journey of this three months, we will now have that joyful, fun energy that's youthful, playful, kind, very much into discovery. And that's what we want to do in this holiday. So for those of you that watch me, and thank you for that very much so, what you'll want to do is you'll want to get the colors of either pink, yellow, that really nice color of peach. You can do a very nice light green color and a light blue. Anything that represents to you those Easter colors. Because as we go along, and that is coming, Easter. Actually, that is where the name Easter came from, from Ostara. Yes, and there's actually a goddess, Ostara. You can look that up. But it is all about the rebirth because right now we are focusing on our goddess, Bridget, and her partner, Lunasa, and he, for short, people will call him Lou, L-U-G-H. So now they've met and they fall in love immediately, actually, which is beautiful because isn't that what we want? It is possible. We are falling in love with ourselves for the first three months. Isn't that what babies do when they first come on the scene from that, let's say, that December time of solstice and now, now they're three months old. They're smiling, they're discovering, and we are enamored with them because everything to them is eyes bright, eyes light, full of joy, and just wanting to not quite move yet because they cannot do a lot, but every little thing, they're kicking and wiggling and having a really good time. I will say to you, if you want to, here we come in the next couple weeks, so make sure you get your eggs. And when you color them this time, instead of doing all of this, I will suggest this. All of these strange things that we do to the eggs these days, just go back to the traditional coloring of the eggs. or if you can find eggs, because there are hens that lay different colors of eggs, if you can find those and you're out and about these days, which some of us are, that might be a good thing too. So if you, when you get your candles, which you'll do, if you cannot find the colors I'm suggesting, at least get the white. On the side of these, as I've shared with you before, get a little push tack, a push pin, or you can get um, a, a stronger needle or a nail or something. And in the side, you'll want to put joy. And on the other side, you'll want to put, hmm, let me, let me see what they have to say, togetherness. It's sort of like communion, 
But And when we're communing, we have these things where we have this hand and that hand, as I said, and it comes together in this. But togetherness gets a greater group. So if you figure that the hen lays so many eggs a day, maybe one or a couple, but then you have, let's say the ducks, they have that many more. And that's what we want to look at. We want to look at the community or the communion. And isn't that what babies do for us when we see those little ones, it draws the family in. It's like, oh, look, look. So that kind of energy. I'm talking about that energy because that's the energy I want you to bring to the candles. A very joyful, playful, um, that togetherness of that male and female energy and bringing it together. So when you first come into a relationship, there's so much joy, so much fun. There's no rules really. It's just all out there. We don't typically, for the most part, when we really fall in love with someone for the first time, feel like we have any rules and we can do anything. That's the energy I want you to bring to the candles. How do you set up an altar? Well, in the background, because I couldn't get this on tape the way I wanted, I set up an altar there. So notice it's in my living area. You could do it in your living area. And what I've done is I've brought some beautiful plants in. I thought that that would be good. How did I get those? They were gifted and I put them there. Get something that's spring, full of life, full of goodness, something that's coming forward, something that you love. I particularly love these. I love the colors of pansies because I just feel like it's a real fairy energy and it lends to the Celtic energy for me. So please do that if you would like. And then I have up there, I have the color of a nice spring color as just, it just is a cloth that's wrapped down. I have some seashells and some rocks, just things that bring mother nature to me. You are all very, very creative and you've shared with me different things you've done for altars do what your heart tells you to do because we can go to Pinterest and all these other places and look for all these things which are great ideas but at the same time you absolutely know what to do and if you're a person that's not getting out so much at this time like me where I'm still spending a, all of my time here at home I just grab what's in my house and I put it on the altar so once you do that I want you to use lavender why i want you to use lavender is because it is a very beautiful fragrance for spring it's very healing as we know it's very calming but if you want to put something else in and if you have this you can add geranium you could add a little bit of lemon if you like to your candle i'm going to give this your energy you choose um, I would keep everything very sweet and um, I wouldn't go to a heavier oil, something that, you know, you want to bring something in really fast because when we're holding that new baby or the new, the new puppy or whatever it is that you bring in your home, it is something that you want that it smells sweet, that it has that newborn smell, that clean, cleanliness sent to it so that's what you want to do in this particular time what we're looking at in this next three months as i was stating before is we're going to start on a bigger discovery so by the time we get to may 1st and then to midsummer we're going to have a little bit more just like a baby and we watch them and what they grow and what they do or whether it's a puppy whether it's a kitty maybe a bird I don't know some of you have snakes they all teach us their medicines of how they move along in their progress also I will use trees quite a bit for something like that so that we can see how it is it is the natural order of things in the world. 
What I would like you to do then is if you have glitter, I've told you before, to put it on a paper plate or parchment or something, put the glitter on there, use the colors of pink or gold, something that's bright and cheery. You could use a little bit of silver if you like and put honey on the candle. If you don't use oil, you can use a substitute of honey and you'll put that on there and then you'll roll the candle towards you and then you'll pick the candle up and put it in its little holder. I would prefer if you can to have you to do three candles. So the question would be, do I put what you asked us to write on there, Davey? Do I put that in all the candles? And the answer to that is yes. If you do one candle, it's good. Can I do two candles? You can, but overall, I would prefer that you did the one or the three. I keep things a little bit more open because there's so many of you and you do it and you want to do it in the way that you want to do it. I have certain things I want you to do in a certain way and others I like it to be a bit open because after all, you'll have more joy and more playfulness if you do it in those ways. And it's not coloring out of the lines so much that you won't be able to manifest what you want because this is really about manifesting and purifying your spirit that you're more and more connected. Because as we go along and we see more leaves on the trees and I'm able to get out there one of these days, then I'll be able to do these outside and show you little things that'll help you to get more connected. As far as do I put eggs out there? If you're one of those that have gotten the chocolate eggs, then and this is coming to me to give to you, then absolutely. If you want to, um, the plastic eggs, I'm going to say to you, please don't put the plastic eggs out there. We want to keep everything as natural as we can. So what about chocolate? Is it traditional or not? Well, I wouldn't get the wrap stuff. And it's just something that I heard that you can put it on there and that's edible. I don't think you can eat a plastic egg the last time I checked. So definitely do that. Do I boil the eggs? That's the other thing that's coming to me. You do wanna have some sort of an offering out there. If you wanna boil about three eggs, actually, I like that. I'm glad that they guided me to give that to you because I feel that that would be a good thing. When we put that, as an offering. Okay, one's going to go to the earth, one is going to go to you after you've done your candle work, and then one you can share. You can split it and take that to the earth and give it to yourself, or you can share it with someone else. Okay, so when we do that, what sort of drink do we put there? What's coming to me would be possibly some sort of cider, like an apple cider, um, if you have that on hand, or a nice juice. I wouldn't suggest any kind of citrus drinks there, or Gatorades, or, you know, and if you have nothing else, um, maybe a nice tea of some sort, maybe a chamomile tea, a lavender tea. Most of us have tea on hand. That would be nice. I would keep more to the flowery teas, than the darker leafed teas. I would do that. So now that you've got your offering and you might have put some chocolate on there and you have your candles, now you're going to light the candle. You're going to be inviting our goddess Bridget and our god Lou. What about those of you that are not in these traditions? Then those that are partners that you are attuned to, those are the ones you want to go to. And I will say this, the Celts were very connected not only to the old ways, which I'm speaking of, which are always here. They were definitely and absolutely connected to 
the, the Christian ways as well. And all of these come, if you go to the root of things, everything came together originally with the original languages. So there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, just for that, as I'm talking and I'm channeling for you. So you'll want to put those things out there simply and beautifully, and then you'll get quiet, light the candles, and you'll just think about how it is, first of all, how do I come together in myself? This is particularly how I want you to ask. How is it that I come together within myself? This is speaking of the ego and the spirit, because the ego mind in our head is really there to protect us. Does it always work to our highest good? Not always. But if we have our spirit that says, this is best, and there's kindness, the ego actually will listen. Even if it argues a little bit, just like a little child or just like that little puppy, um, they will end up listening. We always want to acknowledge that we have those concerns, those little fears. So how is it that I come together these ways? It's not about pushing and being bold and standing up and rah, rah. It's really about quietness, that ebb and flow of things. Okay, then the next thing you'll want to ask is the question two. How is it that I allow my warrior self be together in myself? The warrior is Lou, that male energy, that protector energy. So warrior isn't always about fighting and all of that. It's really about how is it that I protect? How is it that I call that to myself? And you'll know because silently it'll tell you. And then the third question is, is how is it that I am divinely nurturing to myself, soft? And you'll hear that. You'll have the balance of those two energies speak to you. It may simply say kindness after all speak well to yourself whatever those words are and then the two of them will come together that ego mind and the heart the heart will have led you this is more about a celebration and a reconnection again with our deities and the energies that we had at the solstice and every week that we're going along because it is the most important thing we can do all day but when we are just allowing ourselves to be that's the essence of life one last thing please allow yourself a couple of days of this rest and connection because for every little bit you do, the sun is even brighter. Take care, and I'll be sharing a meditation after this. Happy Spring Equinox.